Hello, and welcome to episode 126 of Things I Learned from Bear Harris. And today I thought uh, I would share this beautiful idea of Barry's, actually, that's on this recording that was just released on YouTube. I've never heard it before. It's uh, from 1979. It's actually a Benny Carter uh, recording. It's a live recording. And Barry's on piano. And interestingly enough, uh, Dizzy Gillespie is in the band too. So it's Barry with Benny Carter and Dizzy Gillespie. And it's just fantastic. I'll leave a link in the description. And one of the songs that they play is Perdido, which is a beautiful song, which happens to have the same bridge as I Got Rhythm in B flat. So it would be D7, G7, C7, F7. And Barry happens to play, I mean, the solo is incredible, but amongst all the other incredible things he plays, there's something that really stuck out to me, and that was how he puts certain things together. For instance, he puts together um, a pivot with surrounding. Now, some people call it enclosures, but Barry always referred to it as surrounding. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't matter what the term you want to use. It's okay, as long as we're talking about the same thing. So what he did was... He did, now he's, we're thinking C7. So you have to know your C7 scale, C7 and thirds, triads, chords. And if you know your chords, you have to know what a pivot for each of the chords is. And for those of you that don't know what a pivot is, is instead of um, playing a chord, let's do it from the uh, flat seventh. So if we did it from the flat seventh, it would be um, B flat, if we went up a chord, it would be B flat, D, F, A. So B flat, D, F, A is going up a chord. Now what a pivot of that chord would be, would be you hit the B flat in the same spot, but then you come down and grab the D, F, and the A an octave lower. So now you got here's the normal chord, and here's the pivot. So now you have to be able to do that from every degree of the scale. So if I said, um, here's a chord up from, let's say, the third. You have to be able to do, so the third of C would be E, G, B flat, D. So again, E, G, B flat, D is a chord. But if we pivoted the chord, it would be E. Now we got to grab the, the G down an octave. G, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, B flat D. So it'd be this instead. So now instead of saying this, you got this. So you have to know pivots from every degree of the scale. Just as you know chords up, you have to know uh, you have to know a pivot from every degree of the scale. But then he does this other interesting thing. He says, because a pivot does this. So it'd be like one, two, three, four, one, and two, and. So it ends on an and of a beat. Now, if you wanted to come down one more scale note, that's gonna start on the beat again. So it'd be like one, and two, and three. There's your third beat right there. One, and two, and three. So the down beat would be the next scale note down. But what he does, instead of just coming down that next scale note, he says, he takes this scale note, which happens to be G, and he surrounds that scale note with a half step above and a half step below. So he says, which is beautiful. And actually, he puts three half steps first beforehand. I mean, we don't have to do that, but the phrase is, which is a beautiful phrase. But let's just take the one little spot where he puts, so most of us would just play, which is a beautiful phrase. He adds the surrounding thing on it too. So. so since this is the and, and instead of getting to this right away on the next beat, we add two more notes, which is the surrounding ones. So a half step above, half step below, and then the note. Now, if we decided to take his idea of practicing it on every degree of the scale, the next one is gonna be messed up because then we have to be able to say, if we say, so then we're going to start on the tonic, and we're going to do our pivot. But now we want to get down to this scale note. So the only problem is that we're already on the half step above it because we're on the scale note. So now we have to do something different to this one. 
So what you could do is play the next scale note below it and come up chromatically. So it would be this. So it would be fifth to sixth. You're still coming up with the same rhythmic idea. One and two and three. Oh, one and two and three and four. So you're still coming up what? One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Same idea. Now let's do the next one. So we did the flat seven, we did the tonic. Let's do the second. Pivot. Now the next note, scale note down, would be the flat seven. But we can surround it with a half step above, half step below. So let's do that, which is pretty. Now let's start on the third. We'll do a pivot. And now the next scale note down is tonic, which we can surround with a half step above and a half step below. So we're going to say, now we'll do the fourth. Now, we could do that one too. That's a pretty one. Let's do the fifth. Uh, let's see. Now here we're going to get that same problem again. So instead of, since we're already on a half step above the note we're going to, it happens to be, we're going to do that thing where we go down uh, a scale tone below the note we're about to get to and come up a chromatic. So we're going to say, which is pretty. So we did it for this one too. Uh, let's see, we did it for this one. Uh, we did it for the one starting on the tonic. And we're going to do it for this one which is also really pretty. Let's do the next one. Uh, now you're back to just the normal. So let's do, let's try to do all of them. So we'll say this one. Second. Yep, third. Fourth. Fifth. There's that weird one, next one. and so on. But you see how pretty that is if you start really doing things with that? So normally it's, uh, but now we'll say, and, and if we want to be slick, we could put a 16th note triplet on that surround note. So instead of doing this, maybe we'll put a 16th note triplet on that note. So we'll say, next one. Next one. That's a pretty one. Oh, what if we do two bat in a row? That's a pretty one. Wait. But let's put two sixteen our triplets. Oh man. That's on C seven. Let's put the 16 or triplet again. But you see how pretty that is? Oh my goodness, that's pretty stuff. Just anywhere. Oh man. Let's try it. Let's do a bunch of them. Let's say. a bunch of them in a row but do you see the and and again this it literally takes up a second and a half of his solo and he also puts three half steps i forget what he does after that but it's of course also beautiful and could also be dissected the same way we're dissecting this so that's another thing that's true uh, and, and i think i brought this up before there are many great players in our music really a lot of great players but i think the thing that separates the the true masters from the great players is the masters you can almost just put on any song at any spot and listen to a couple of seconds and stop the recording and you're going to learn something really deep about music in that whatever one or two seconds and that goes for 
all the great ones, you know, Sonny Rollins, Bud Powell, Coleman Hawkins, all the great players, Barry, all the all of the master players, I should say. Those are all the masters. Not to say that great players don't have moments like that, but I really think if you break down what is the difference between a master and a great player, which we're kind of, you know, and there is a difference. There's a distinct difference. It's that a master, you can almost do this at any point of their recording. But a great player, you know, has moments of this, has moments of this. So we're all shooting to have moments of this. But the real masters, everything they do is like this. Everything. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for the solo um, that I'm talking about. And you should definitely check it out. And see if you can hear the part I'm referring to. I think it's like his second chorus, maybe, in the bridge. He goes into this phrase. But it was just so beautiful. I had to share it and, um, you know, have fun practicing um, a pivot and then immediately after a surround. Until next time. Thanks.